of round 17, Glenelg versus South Adelaide. Last time they met at the Glenelg Oval, Glenelg won by 112 points. Gary Christie and Peter Carey in the middle. Christie hitting it long and strong to the northern end of the ground. Gives David Kapler the opportunity. Darren Kapler, should I say, who's on his left foot, his natural foot, and through it goes. What a great start for South Adelaide. First goal on the board in the first 30 seconds of play. A magnificent movement into the forward line. Oh, yes, indeed, Robert. Superb effort by the Panthers. It took less than 20 seconds. A big thump out of the middle by Gary Christie. Darren Kapler playing at half forward today. He played most of his footy at half back this season. Swooped on it, only his natural left foot and through it went. A goal to the Panthers, just the start that Coach Davies would be looking for. Let's hope that they can go on with it from here. They need a lift. They're lamenting a ninth spot at the moment, and they're playing third side Glenelg. Well, I said Gary Christie can get another one away. First one was a good knock, it's a better bounce towards the dead heat. David Dickinson blocking the ball for South Adelaide. Flips the ball out towards Martin, he misses it. Kernahan with the opportunity. Dickinson again. Hodgman who's taken the place of Stringer in the side this afternoon. Alan Stringer that is. He gets it forward to Kernahan. Kernahan, long one to Hall. Kicked forward by Maynard. This is the full forward area. Henwood from the back. Coppings under the ball. Seabone picks up the crumbs. Naley blocks him. Snee Bickler. It's a hectic bit of play down in that defensive action there for South Adelaide. So it's one goal to South, the mill gets the score. Just a minute and a half gone in this opening at Football Park. The mill going with the use of the breeze. Breeze, it should be worth two or three goals for them at least. South have done well as Naley gets it clear to the centre. Deckel to Martin is good football. Well, there's a wrestle on at half forward. Two players taking no interest in the game. The umpires haven't seen it. They're still having a go. Meanwhile, the action is back with Rodney Campbell. It was Garten, the Glenelg player, in it. I couldn't pick the South Adelaide player, but they're up and into it. Might have been Daryl Hewitt. Close to the line. In fact, it's gone out of play in the right forward pocket. So action of plenty in the start. South bringing up their first goal within 20 seconds and a decent sort of Donny book between Rodney Campbell and Ad Adam Garten. Throw in in the right forward pocket about 30 metres around from the south goal. Davies went high. Campbell goes after it again, but the ball beats him out of play. South, who have won four and drawn one, lost 11. Currently in ninth position. They'd be disappointed with their performance in 86. But the Bay's coming strongly back into contention late in the season. Tremendous win by them last week at Prospect Oval against North Adelaide. Here's a two-out battle on centre wing. Simons against Brockhurst. Brockhurst did well. Butler goes short. Campbell a chance. Threw himself at it but didn't take it. Gibbs, ever cool, gets it back towards half forward. It slides out of the hand of Brockhurst and out of play. So the Panthers are goal. The Bay's yet to score. Well, kicking with the advantage of a slight breeze. It's a northwesterly breeze favouring the golf course end here at Football Park. Kerry trying to get the ball back behind. Dickinson takes possession. Dickinson still there. Hodgson looks as though he may have had him a little high. But the umpire's decided to bounce the ball. Between centre wing and half forward for South Adelaide. Members stand tight. Gartner is knocking the ball towards centre wing. Brockhurst gets an awkward bounce. Simons, nice ball control. Within a wild handball. Dickinson over the top. Philip Reid. McDermott now with the opportunity to Maynard. Maynard towards centre half forward for Glenelg. His kick's not good. Michael Bennett can't take the mark. Gary John's coming in. But Michael Bennett will take the free kick and he's at centre half back for South Adelaide. In a very reliable back band for South Adelaide. It's played centre as well as a good kick. Mark Naley on centre wing. Kind of slightly backward of centre wing. To half forward. Players setting themselves up there. Steckle in the middle of the pack. It's just tapped away towards Martin. He's run for Kernahan. Nice pick up and a good tackle. And he's been penalised for a throw. A little unfortunate, I feel. So Andrew Brockhurst with the free kick. He goes forward to David Kapler. David Kapler long and strong to full forward. Looking for Rick Davies up there. Got a long sleeve Guernsey on. Oh, great tap. Take then by Darren Kapler. And he's kicked it out of bounds on the foot. Yes, it was a good take from Darren Kapler. Of course, he kicked the first goal for the Panthers. But his shot was offline. Maynard into the space. Hall off. Tony Hall played a blinder last week at half forward. Beat one of the best half-backs in the game in John Riley. That doesn't happen very often. He caught on this occasion as Darren Kapler went in strongly. Chance now for Bennett. Grenville runs him down. Into support came Johns. Hooks around the corner. Opportunity for Max Eddy. Appeared to get one in the back, but play called on. Martin took it. 
The handball is out wide to Kapler. The umpire has seen an infringement. And the free kick will go South Adelaide's way. Darren Kapler chips in short to Naley. Naley can go wide to Brockhurst, but ignores him. Back onto the right foot. The kick is towards centre forward, but in front, Carey in the way for the bay. The bay's out of trouble as Carey goes short towards half-back. Goes and finds out there Maynard lurking, Grenvold. Now McDermott through the centre. Glenelg got a bit of an attack now. A high kick though on the wrong foot by McDermott. He's up to half forward. But Tony Hall, reliable as ever overhead. A very fine mark. Not the spectacular mark, that one. Just great judgment. Fair way out of goal. Players getting very close to the distance from there in the reserves game. This is no exception. It's right into the square. Copping from behind and Butler just taking the ball over the line for a behind to Glenelg. They're one point now, trailing South Adelaide one goal. Philip Brooksby to bring the ball back into play. He should go to the outer side, to that non-defensive pocket, although he's looking to go straight down the middle of the ground. Maybe dangerous. Christie in front takes it at the second attempt. So it ended well. It's a little dangerous, but come off. David Kaplan supplies the run. He's got to get round Maynard. Does it well. The long hand ball seeks out Dickinson. Dickinson goes to Campbell in the was it Hewitt in the pocket. It's Hewitt coming to meet him as Garten. Well done, Garten, as he got puts the ball, puts it out wide. The chance now for Simons. Needs a sit and gets it. Simons tackled by Dickinson a little late. The half forward. Hall in front. Read the crumbs. Tackle from Butler from behind and good. Naily held without it. Play allowed to go on. Opportunity for Snabikla. Forced onto the left foot, keeps it low, slides off the ground, gives over ran it, but goes back strongly. Campbell threw himself at it. Good work from Rodney Campbell. Kept it in the area. Gibbs appeared to have the ball, but uh, Campbell did well. Throw in at left half forward flank. South lead by five points. Peter Carey coming up with Chris McDermott. Christie in front position for South Adelaide. Over the top, Max Eddie just thumps it blindly to Gibbs. Gibbs to centre wing, very high. Henwood coming in. Gets rid of Steve Bickler, or Steve Bickler got rid of himself. Whichever way, Steve Bickler's the winner. The umpire saying interference, pushing the back to him. Dickinson taps it forward up from the half forward line. Well, Kapler coming through, David Kapler to Campbell. He's in a bit of trouble as Gibbs pushes him off balance. He, then he jumps into Gibbs. The umpire calling play on. No ticky touch would freeze here. And it's at centre half forward for South, and that's what's going to stay for a moment. And the umpire will bounce the ball at that particular. No, he won't. Changed his mind. Over the shoulder, free kick. Grenville to take it. Grenville has Cruz lose. Cruz in turn towards centre wing. From behind, good mark for Paul Martin. Too strong in the air for David Kernahan. Goes short. David Kepler. Centre half forward. He now for kicking the ball a long way, but in this occasion goes short. The lead is on. The pass is good, and Max Eddy has it at left half forward. About 45 metres from goal, and umpire Weston coming in to indicate to Peter Carey exactly where the mark was taken. And now Max Eddy, the opportunity to notch South Adelaide second. They, Darren Kapler got the first. Max Eddy from 45 metres. It's holding up somewhat in the breeze. Off hands. Murphy in there pushes it over the line and the first point to South Adelaide. They're 1-1. They lead the Bays. At one point we've played 8 minutes and 30 seconds of the first quarter. Bickerville bringing the ball back into play through Michael Murphy. Kicks to the outer side. A lot of players leaving there for South Adelaide. Mark in particular spoiled everything. Kernahan takes the ball and gives it to McDermott. McDermott over half forward to the pocket. Coppings there with one hand. Coppings completes the mark. Well done, Stephen Copping. Long way from goal. Very good contest. Copping at his best then. He goes in with a short kick to Mark Naley. Picked him out beautifully. The Rover playing his job well, though, of course. Dropping back into that spot. Went to play on. Now he is. David Marshall was cribbing over the mark. Now by caught him back, luckily. Andrew Brockhurst, nice evasion there as he got past. He's left the ball behind. Now he's got a chance to kick a goal. Decides against that and kicks it across the ground when perhaps he could have attacked the goal square confidently. Grenfold comes in, gives it across to Cruz. And Cruz plays towards the boundary line. And it's out of bounds in the forward pocket for South Adelaide. They're 1-1-7, leading Glenelg one point. Going to be... Steckle to do the ruck work against Carey. Carey who played such an important part last week in the Bay's win against North Adelaide. 
worked his heart out. Kerry worked himself to the front on this occasion. Gave it to Hodgman who fumbled. The umpire sorted out a free. It's going to the Little Rover for a push in the back. And Kim Hodgman who came into the side today when Alan Stringer couldn't take his place. It appears as though Maynard's gone to the middle and Hodgman and McDermott are roving. The kick towards Harford or Hall. Beautifully done. Fort Bennett under the ball and then fell back on it. Off to Simons, copping and Seabone on a lead. Take your pick, Seabone wants it. And that was a beautiful pass coming through half forward from Simon. So the chance now for the Bay's first major. Seabone, 25 metres out, almost directly in front. He's got it. First goal, the Bay's level it up, 1-1 one, one apiece. Well, a good player to defence, did a free kick to Kim Hodgman. He advantaged it on quickly to McDermott, and he didn't waste any time getting it up to that half-forward line. And of course, you can see the advantage of getting the ball forward when it's one out into that full-forward area, and John Seabone coming out to take the easiest of marks then when given the opportunity. Just read that ball as it came in so quickly. Goes good at Brooksby, no opportunity. So the scores are level. South doing a pretty good job, job though, kicking into this free. 11 minutes gone in the first quarter. Umpires today are uh, Shram and Weston. McDermott. The Vic was caught. Good tackle from Reed. Butler's trying to get it out. Does so now, but only as far as McDermott. Seemed to do battle with him when Dickinson. Paul Martin tackles high. Murphy, the offender. Martin now to put the Panthers into attack. Eddie goes off of the lead. Oh, he's got a 15 metre penalty. Henwood back on the mark. Martin goes for distance. Where's Davies? Flying high cruise, couldn't control it. Garten then support. Used his strength well. Brockhurst attacking the ball, did it beautifully. There's a chance for Brockhurst. 30 metres out, the ball is going in towards the goals, but it's all the bays back there. And Murphy takes the timely mark in defence. Got a very good season, centre half back Michael Murphy. He goes to the centre of the ground to Philip Reed. Reed to McDermott. Over the top to Kernahan. Milk not running at the goal at the moment, just handballing the ball to keep in possession. Now a long kick up to half wood, they're attacking through Tony Hall confidently, well they might. Simon comes in, takes it, gives it to Henwood, Henwood to full forward. The kick is straight, it's a goal. First goal to Wayne Henwood, Milk 2-1, 13, South Adelaide 1-1-7. Oh, that's a much better movement by the Bays, they had uh, three players in at the fall of the ball. A handball over the top to Henry was a good one. Now he had two or three options from there. He had two players loose at half forward, but he decided on the third option. That was to go for home. That he did. Wayne Henry boots his first. The Bays get their second. 2-1 now, leading the Panthers 1-1. Now that they need to be that movement through that half forward line, a bit of accuracy. They've gone in this a couple of times, barely indirectly, when perhaps an attack on the goal square was warranted. Gary Christie and Ruck, he's against Peter Carey. Christie knocking it forward. Deckel comes in, just bodying players out of the road. That enables Maynard to come in and kick it up towards Marshall at half forward. Slips out of his hand. Reed, McDermott, beautifully done to Marshall. He's a good kick. I would like him to be getting half forward. I was in the opposition. Through the middle of the for his first. David Marshall. Three goals, one now. Grinnell to South, 1-1. One, one. Well, Marshall kicked the goal, but he, he's done it all year. Chris McDermott, the little handball. He was under pressure. But he did it so superbly. It set it up for Marshall, and uh, as Robert told you, he doesn't miss from there. Marshall's booted his first. The Bays now have gone clear by 12 points. They've got two in a hurry, and they lead 3 1 to South 1 1. Coach Corn should be smiling too. A little bit of a joke there on the bench, and well, there might be. Well, they've got a light at the moment. The last few minutes, they've been superb. Carey this time just tapping it down to Reed. Kapler comes in, gives it to Sneebickler. Sneebickler forward, and Wayne Stringer, he's at half back to defend for Glenelg. His kick's wide and long. Marshall from behind, he usually strikes these marks. Well done, David Marshall, just popped himself back behind them. Catching Gary Johns under the ball, gave himself a movement at it. He completed a world judge chess mark. I would think this would be in distance too. Fairly strong breeze ball carrying a long way to the southern end of the ground. He's miskicked it, but it's still got the distance quite well. And through for a behind. So Glenelg now 3-2, south 1-1. Somewhat of an indication of the strength of the breeze. Marshall from about 55 metres then. Had no difficulty in making the distance. 
Although Brooksby gets good distance with that one to, into the breeze to the outer side. Working his way through was Kernahan. Empire's pay to three. It's against David Kernahan for holding the ball. John Snavickler is the recipient. He goes out wide. Steckel had front spot, but from behind, that's a good mark from Michael Murphy. We've seen some good marking. Conditions a little bit difficult. The ball must be just a fraction slippery. We had a shower just as play started here this afternoon. But uh, players handling it pretty well in the air at the moment. Gary Christie completes that mark at centre-half back. Off goes Max Eddy. Puts it out in front of him. Eddy having trouble stooping for it. Garten does well. Gets it back to Wayne Stringer. But the boundary umpire signifying that the ball was out of play on that outer side. 13 points of the lead, the Bays are in front, 15 and a half minutes gone. Steckel against Carey, chance for Hodgman. Three Panthers set upon him, and again the ball is out of play. The ball a little bit slippery. The oval in magnificent condition, of course. The slightest sign of any mud whatsoever, but the rain has made the top a bit greasy. Dickinson on top of that ball as Carey knocked it back over the off into the space behind and that's where Vanille wanted to get it now they run away through Reed up to the half foot John's in front this time can't complete the mark dives on it and the umpire will bounce out to get centre half forward for Glenelg certainly in very good form at the moment they've had a great season this latter part of the season in particular since about round 10 they've only lost one game since then a great win last week kick forward very high in the air by Kernahan Seabohm in front Follows it on, well done John Seabohm, an opportunity on his left leg, Dickinson trying to block it, but the kick's good. A strong kick, was it touched off the boot, no, says the umpire, second goal to John Seabohm, 4-2 to Glenelg, South 1-1 one, one on Sevens big lead. Great footy from the centre half back, come full forward, show great agility on that occasion, swooped on it, turned onto that left foot, that gave him an advantage to get away, then the pressure came, but he was good enough to get boots the ball and from 35 metres out that's a good goal. 4-2 then the Bays lead south 1-1. Coach Rick Davies a little concerned South Wales to a great start the have had all the attacks since then Carey over the top, Dickinson holding his ground on the defensive side, runs straight into Campbell Darren Kapler the half forward very high in the air and coming across Adam Garten easier to mark, he's going to like that back pocket spot, he started off with the centre half back when he first came to the Merle from Broken Hill Peter Maynard towards full forward. A very high kick. Seabohm on the run. Over the top. Bennett comes back. He's got Johns loose in the other back pocket. Johns now will go short to Butler. South setting up the loose man. Now he's got a paddock to run in, but decides to kick towards centre wing. Chance for Brockhurst. Well put by Butler. Brockhurst, who started well in this game. This is his fourth kick. Looking for David Catlett. Beaten by Grenville, but Catlett did well. Intercepting went Campbell. The handball is good to Darren Kepler. Look at the pace. Here he goes. Now Wes Davies. The kick is long. Looking for his coach. Just over his head, however. And through for a point. 1-2 then south. Glenelg 4-2. What a great attacking player that Darren Kepler is. Magnificent left foot kick. Cruise to the outer side. Looking for Kernahan. They've got to hide out there. Martin, well done. Christie's lurking back across the centre. Kerry's gone back into the fence. Kick away too slowly. So Christie's caught holding the ball. Ross Gibbs is up there. He's going to take the free kick. He's on the half-back line. Going for centre-half forward. It's a very strong, punchy kick. Snee Bickler spoils away. Brockhurst again. He's been in everything for South Adelaide. Nice evasion. Then the handball to Snee Bickler. Snee Bickler direct this time towards full foot over the top of Carey. Rick Davies a little slow getting there. Then comes in late and pushes Max Cruz in the back. But Cruz dives on top of the ball and he'll take the free kick. Cruz's kick is to Simons, loose at half back. Now he's got Maynard further afield. Maynard takes it. Calling for it was Murphy, but he's ignored him. Swings onto the left foot. A high kick towards centre half forward. Henwood. Paul takes it, then lost it. Handball was meant for McDermott, but intercepted by Butler. Now a hole in the ball decision. Wayne Butler just a little unlucky. Couldn't get his get himself clear, and Wayne Stringer has it. Stringer. First just for McDermott, he's got into the space, all oh, Brooksby late, puts him to rest, but McDermott's okay. And that was a good, courageous mark. McDermott feeling for his back a little, 15 metres been applied and he's brought him right into the square, he's only five metres out. 
and Chris McDermott will not miss from there. His first, 5-2 to the base, it's his fourth kick, south, 1-2. Javelin rulers then in defence. That was good play by McDermott. He ran down into the attacking area to the spot over the top. The kick that came to him was a little high. It looked as though it was going to float. But the South Adelaide players couldn't get there. Brooksby read it and he came out from fullback. He was too late arriving. And when he put his arm up, McDermott had taken the ball and was spinning away from the contact. He was flicking the underneath the chin. But he's taken that free kick with the 15 metres. Kicked the goal. Take the milk, full of confidence. They certainly are a side that plays well when they're in, in good form. Better than most, I think, is because of the number of good players that they do have. And once they really get their form up, they're a very, very good team. 24 points is the lead to the Bays. 20 minutes gone in the first quarter. It was an enterprising start by the Panthers. They had all the play in the first five minutes, but since then it's been all the Bays. One of the reasons is because of the great form of Chris McDermott ball a chance but support came from Johns no one to give it to and went to the safety of the line I guess it was clever thinking by Gary Johns he had no alternative all the South Adelaide players forward were covered and the line was the best bet Henwood will do the ruck work Carey playing a kick behind the game at the moment the Bickler goes against him and there's been an infringement it's against the Bickler now why I'm not sure the Bickler doesn't know and perhaps it was for a holding the arm and uh, Johnston Bickler having a few words to umpire Schramm, but that won't change the decision. Henwood's got it, 55 metres out. He'll go to the square, might even go further. No, he won't. Steve Ohm got a hand on it. Who's first to recover? Hall had it and lost it. Popping, twist out of trouble. Now Reed, but he's in trouble. Back to Hall. Here's a go now. Hall with the left foot. He's just offline. One point only. 5-3 the Bays. South Adelaide 1-2. Glenelg very confident. That's good football by Glenelg in those close quarters. Copping and Hall, Reed, all being prepared to give the ball off very quickly to evade the tackle just to get the opportunity to kick the goal. And in the end, I think that Tony Hall made that a bit harder than he needed. He got so clear he could have run another metre or two and really sunk the right foot into it. Barclay. Handball's pretty awkward. McDermott diving on top again as he always is. In underneath the pack and he's going to get a free kick. He's at half forward. Glenelga 5-3, playing very well, leading south 1-2. Into full forward, copping in front, spot ahead of honour. Bennett fumbled it badly, Hall gets his hands on it. Brooksby coming in, he came in, there's an easy chance for Maynard. And he's had an airy, <laughs> or half an airy, I think it just sort of ran across his boot very slowly. It's been rushed through from behind, so south 1-2, Glenelg 5-4. It was a beautiful scoop out that gave Maynard the chance and... Uh, Indeed, it was half an area. He almost got a boot on it. Now a chance for Carey as Marshall hands it off. The kick is high. Seabom in front. Brooksby the small from behind. Reed hooking around the corner. Two bay against one. Topping. Oh, good mark. Stephen Topping. The long arm stretched over the top. Mind you, there were two good old players to one. If you got the numbers, you'll certainly win out. And that's what happened there. Topping directly in front. Ten metres out. Going for goal number one and gets it. His first. Bay's looking good. 6 4 to South 1 2. Top action on the Sevens big league. So Stephen Copping, that's the second great mark he's taking. Early in the quarter, he took a very good mark out in the pocket. And then we saw just what Copping's forte really is. That is his ability to stretch. And then when he's at full stretch, he managed somehow or other to hang on to the ball. He had two players in front of him. Front of him. He stretched over the top of both of them and completed a well-judged mark. So Glenelg in very, very good form. Continuing their run, they kicked six goals four with this three. Can South Adelaide get one or two back to perhaps give them a chance in this second quarter? Approaching the 24-minute mark of the first quarter and the Bays in front by 32 points. Becoming very dark at Football Park at the moment as the heavy clouds come in overhead. Christy Tango's out of trouble well. David Catler to Brockhurst. Probably the best of the Panthers in this first quarter. But the ground and the court. Unfortunate then for Brockhurst because he was clear and this uh, greasy ground just uh, caught him out. Hodgman takes the free, plus 15 metres, bangs it back to half forward. Henwood, one-handed, the Mickler came in late and punched it clear. Can't get it clear now, as though Henwood worked hard. Hall got unloaded, in went Rodney Campbell, and umpire Weston forced to bow. Instead of half forward, indeed it's very dark at the moment. Huge number of players, as you can see, around the ball. 
Carey nonchalantly went for it. The tap was by Steckel, taken by Dickinson. Out wide, searching for Paul Martin, just a fraction too long for him and out of play. As this rain comes, very nice lead to have five goals. If the ground gets very slippery, it's going to be very hard to handle the ball. Out of bounds, centre wing, out of sight. Ball just tapped down, very quick kick forward by Darrell Hewitt. He's given Darren Kapler an opportunity, he's got the pace. He'll have no trouble, he's just a matter of kick it straight, I'd say. See, that's a great kick into the breeze. Well done, Rick Davies. The ball just taking the wrong break. A little bit of an off spinner on it. He's gone through it from behind. 1-3 to South Glenelg, 6-4. They're yeah, the breaks, the football side need to win games. And uh, when you're in the position that South Adelaide are, they need every break they can get. But as often happens when you're, things are not going your way, they just continue to do that. Fire sorted out of three. Now, it, the action was back at full back, but there must have been an infringement against Gart at centre half back, so it was played that way. Gibbs got it. Reed takes it well. Around Butler easily. On to Wayne Stringer. Glenelg running well. The handball over the top to Maynard. In the lens support goes McDermott. Good tackle. Although it may be a fraction high. Yes, it is. The tackle was from Brockhurst. McDermott was clear. He came late. And unfortunately for him and the Panthers, the tackle was just a little too high. And McDermott now has it about 40 metres out with the breeze at his back. The breeze is just dying a little at the moment as these clouds roll over. And uh, light rain starting to fall. McDermott has booted one. Gee, this is kick number seven already. Been a fine player. 11 possessions for the quarter. That's offline and a point only. 6-5 the Bay, South Adelaide 1-3. Robert Odie. Yeah, that was a little bit careless then by Andrew Brockhurst. He had Chris McDermott then. Careless on the tackle. He had one hand over his shoulder. Ball kicked the outer side by Brooksby. Comes off hands to Hodgman. He gives it away to David Kernahan. In towards the goal square. Copping's there. John's from behind. Copping nearly completed that haul now. He's tackled by Bennett. And the ball, a stalemate in the forward pocket. Not that far into the pocket. Umbrellas are out. Not coming down that hard. Just a light rain, but it'll be enough to make the surface of the ground very greasy as well as the ball. Hall with two hands. And will bounce again. Same spot. 20 metres from the goal. The goal, goal, goal that is. A couple of players back there in this area. It'll be a pretty good kick that kicks a goal. Henwood from back. Steve Bickler takes possession. Well done. He goes out towards Steckel. He's having a run on the ball. Christie's at centre half forward. Steckel now from that half back flank. Puts it towards centre wing. Murphy doing a little pushing and shoving. I've just learnt from uh, former umpire Robin Bennett. Uh, Robert, that uh, the new rule regarding the interference by a full forward if the fullback is kicking off. I didn't quite realise that before, then that free kick was paid because uh, there was an interference when the fullback was kicking off. And the free kick now reverts to the square line, not a 15 metre penalty. So we're up to date with all the rules as Brockhurst takes it and loses it. The handball was meant for Butler, it was almost taken by Maynard. Chance now for McDermott, over to Maynard. Forced onto the left foot, but gets it in towards Seaboam in front. The fist is from Butchby. Read beautifully by Honor. The handball out wide to Paul Martin. Panthers momentarily out of trouble anyway, as the short kick will find Rodney Campbell at halfback. Martin running on. He kicks the centre wing. Players setting themselves up there. And it's Adam Garth who takes the mark. He's in very good form in this defence. The third very good piece of play. Done it to be his fifth kick. And a good kick it is. It's cleared the half forward line. Good, good chance to go back. Oh, well taken, Tony Hall. The second mark he's taken with his feet planted firmly on the ground, requiring sheer strength and judgment, and he's done it superbly. About 45, 50 metres from goal. Easy distance with this breeze, although I have a feeling it might be starting to come around from the southwest. They've had to win this quarter. The one thing South don't want them to have is the next quarter. First goal to Tony Hall. But they're racing away. They're 7-5 now. South 1-3 on seven's big lead. Yes, it's turning into a very good quarter of football by the Bays. They started slowly, but since then, they've, since the first five minutes, they've included seven goals, five. Tony Hall, capable of doing the incredible. He did it on that occasion. Another superb mark by him. And the Bays at 7-5 lead. South 1-3 as rain tumbles very heavily at the park. Certainly is coming down. Very heavy indeed. Player running too many players in the square for South Adelaide. That's a bit careless. Carey's kick is a very awkward pick on that occasion.
case, that wind may have changed. It dropped very suddenly then, although he tried to screw punt. Campbell, Marshall, Simon. Let's have a look at this again. He's gone to the front of the goal square with his kick. Looking for McDermott across there. He can't get him. The ball skidding off his hands. Players diving on top. That was on it. It was down there. Brooksby trying to get his hands on it. And the greasy peak finally goes out into the pocket where Michael Bennett takes possession. The low kick up the, the centre of the ground. Deckel. He's had slips. Finally recovers. Out wide to the wing. Hewitt from behind. Stringer tapping it forward. Kernahan. Opportunity for Maynard lurking in the centre of the handball underdone. Probably the heavy ball causing that. Naley coming across with an opportunity. And he usually takes advantage of most. This is no exception. Max Eddy. David, he could be in distance. What do you think? Yeah, although this rain is absolutely tumbling down at the moment. The siren has gone, although he's going to be brought back to have the kick. No, he played on. Yes, he is. Sorry, I thought the umpire for a moment was going to say that he played on and that uh, the siren had intervened, but uh, that's not the case. Robert. Yeah, the government... The government... He sort of is the government. The umpire, he called time out, in fact, just prior. That's why he's having the kick. So let's see if Max Eddy can kick this goal. Boy, just South Adelaide need it. They've got to be in the game. As soon as this wind changes, have a look at the kicks. He's out carrying quite well now, that kick. Carried straight off the edge of his boot now and out of bounds on the full start quarter time at Football Park. But Elk 7-5-47, leading South Adelaide 1-3-9. Started the second quarter. Glenelg leading by 38 points, and it would seem that the wind has changed from northwest to southwest. And Glenelg maybe now an opportunity to have the wind again in the second quarter. And they took advantage of it well in the first quarter. Their seven goals were kicked very well indeed. Gary Johns at half back takes the mark for South Adelaide. Shane Butler just need a bit of attack and strong attack. Gives the ball to David Kapler. He's got a fit of the fumbles on centre wing. Trying to recover now, does Kapler? David Marshall just holding him in the area. Peter Maynard, he's not too happy with the umpire's decision, but I think he's given a free kick to David Kepler. Yes, and this rain, Robert, is going to make it very difficult for the next uh, 15 minutes or so. That is, if no rain, no further rain falls. The ground was a little greasy at the start, but this heavy down for it uh, just before quarter time has made it quite slippery. Dickinson towards centre half forward. Tempted mark by Garten. Taken out of the air by Campbell. The handball is over the top to Eddie. Eddie fires in towards the goals into the square. And again, the Glenelg defence stands strong. Kernahan down from his wing will go short to Hodgman. It's too long for him. Chance now at the back for Naley. Got to beat Hodgman. Chips in short, but the pass is not well put. And uh, Michael Murphy has no trouble taking the chest mark in defence. Murphy looking to go to that outer side. Very dark over there as up went Gary Johns. Couldn't control it and the ball is out of play. The Bay 7-5 leads South Adelaide 1-3. You don't often see Mark Naley make a kick like he did a moment ago. Very careless kick to Murphy. He had the goal on a free leg. Murphy up there at halfback. Crashes the ball forward to Marshall. McDermott coming, not McDermott, Maynard coming through strongly to centre half forward. And a very good mark by Michael Bennett. One of the few times he's beaten Tony Hall in the air. Not many people do, I might add. Steve Bickler, Butler, South Adelaide now with a bit of attack. Straight through, centre half forward, Campbell in front, and just cutting across, Murphy yet again. Murphy, Murphy rather developing into a very fine player at centre half back. Kicks it long. Marshall slipped at the crucial moment, gave Johns the chance. Burrowing in the bottom of the pack there, is it Maynard or McDermott? Neither, I think. No, it's McDermott. Can't get it clear, and umpire Shram into bounce. Just on the attacking side of centre for Glenelg. Glenelg, who've established this 38-point lead, and with the rain continuing to fall now, it's going to be very difficult for the Panthers to peg it back. Difficult also because the wing, as uh, Robert told you, appears to have swung around. Kick number 11 from Maynard is in the direction of Seabone. McDermott again at the bottom of the pack. No, it was Marshall. Works it out, but only as far as Dickinson. Johns, back to Martin, the Panthers are clear, Martin goes out wide, Grenvold against Darren Kepler, used his body well on that occasion Darren Kepler and gets clear with his pace, the kick searches for Eddie and finds him, Eddie 
wanting to hand it off went to David Kaplan then dummy back onto the right foot oh, he's gone all the way with that one but he's well offline and out of bounds on the full the Panthers need goals but can't get them or was it a point no a point indeed a point then to the Panthers they're 1-4 with Algar 7-5 and Max Eddy, one would have thought that that ball would have swung from right to left, not left to right. And the Panthers having no luck at all. Max Cruz, he's pushed as he kicks it, but not pushed hard enough to force the kick out of bounds on the full. So there'll be a throw in between half forward and forward pocket for South Adelaide. Since that wind just straight across the ground at the moment, it's certainly not favouring the southern end like it was. Here he's back there as usual. He's with Steckel. Here his body underneath. Handball to Maynard. He taps it on to Hodgman. Hodgman out wide. Player running out there is Wayne Stringer. Hodgman again. So they'll get into a bit of trouble as the rain pours down. Luckily we've got a television screen here because we can't see the other side of the oval. No, Michael Murphy. Gee, what a great game he's playing. He's been in everything at centre half back. Off hand. Kurt Hand. So there's a little gap underneath two players and went that way. Hall tries to flick it on but just misses Reed. Bennett, Butler rather, Hodgman coming in. Oh, well done, Brockhurst. And he gets the ball to David Kapler. Hodgman on the ground and then runs his full 10 metres. Campbell is short at centre half for Defiance Hill. He went for the handball. Gibbs did well. Simon's asked it now but runs into trouble in the form of Steckel. Trying to get out was David Kernahan. McDermott lost it but the tackle was applied and the free kick will go against Rodney Campbell. Son of Channel 7 commentator Graham Campbell, of course, not happy with the decision. A wry smile came to his face. Dermot, kick number nine, playing very, very well indeed. Towards Henwood, taps it on in the direction of Hall. Hall in turn gave it to Maynard. He was the set upon. Going in strongly was Henwood, also Hodgman, but again, umpire slam forced to bounce. Conditions very difficult now. No mud around, of course, but the grass has become very greasy indeed. The bounce is centre half back. Christie just tapping it out to Brockhurst. Brockhurst with a little bit of control or attempted control. Up to half of there's an indication how slippery the ball was. It just comes straight out of Darren Kapler's arm. He just does it so easily. Beautiful player. The kick towards full forward, cruising position best, and he takes the mark. Well, David didn't think he did. He's given the impression that maybe half volleyed it. 15 metre three. Rick Davies nowhere near the pace he used to have to stop that runaway attack. Hodgman now at centre half back. I think he's playing in the centre of the ground this afternoon. Just taking straight over from Alan Stringer, the player that he replaced. We're up at half forward with McDermott now. The kick. Well, that's holding up, David. Maybe that wind still is across the ground a little bit. And Duck and Steve Bickler marking the ball. Yes, there's no doubt that that one held up, Robert. So Bickler gets it out wide to Johns. Johns will go short to David Kaplan. Doesn't quite reach him, but he does well. Tony Hall comes out with it. The umpire has seen a three for a push in the back, and it will go the way of David Kaplan. At half, at half back, popping on the mark. David Kaplan onto that left foot. Puts it towards centre wing, Carey. That's the judgment. Put the big thumbs behind it and took it at the second attempt. Kicked it, <coughs> kicked it neatly the mark. It goes Brock, there's an opportunity. Butler lends support, but overran it badly. Maynard didn't. The handball was intended for Reed, but wasn't a good one. Chance now for Reed to butter up. Tackled. Lays it off in the direction of McDermott. McDermott having trouble getting it up too. Now Hodgman. Hodgman is through. Over it goes to Reed. South Adelaide player, Reid, is on the ground. The goal registers. Philip Reid boots his uh, first. And the Bays go to 8-5 now, leading the Panthers 1-4. Yeah, Philip Reid, he waited to the last second to kick it, just as Hodgman did to get the hand. Well, it was a beautiful movement by Kim Hodgman. He accelerated through. Didn't try and kick it himself. He gave the quick handball to the body. And Reid, just giving himself a fraction longer, encouraged the player coming in. And he was flattened just slightly after he kicked the goal. Bays have increased their lead to 43 points. Seven and a half minutes gone in the second quarter. McDermott in everything, couldn't handle that one. Fairclough on the ground, gave it to Daryl Hewitt. Hewitt goes towards Davies. Didn't control it. 
In comes Eddie. Davey's a little soccer off the ground. Back to Eddie. Eddie pushes it to Campbell. He can't control it. Gibbs on the bottom fights it. And there'll be a bounce about 30 metres away from the Panther goal. But there's a few um, movements into attack in this second quarter. They're one four. The days are eight five. One gets a feeling looking at Rick Davies. It's not the sense of urgency about his game that there was in former times. I think he's looking forward to the day, Dave, when he just literally does coach from the bench. Fair play with the kick forward. Through from behind. So South moved to 1-5. They're training for Mills, who are on 8-5. Seven goals the difference. And uh, as Rick told us, Robert, that day is nigh because he uh, intends to retire after his 350th. And I think today is game number 300 and... 89? Well, it wasn't. Oh, that's all tough. 349 it is. He's got one game to go after this one. So perhaps we could be seeing the last few games of Rick Davies. The kick in from Daryl Hewitt. Davies at the back. Carey and Funnel should have taken that one. Campbell had to help him as Davies threw it back to Naley. No doubt about that. It was a tub of ball action between the legs. Umpire Sram right on the slot. Couldn't miss it. Three will go the way of Peter Carey, although the ball is lost for the moment as Ross Gibbs has to go over the fence to retrieve it. Very few spectators braving the elements out there and uh, Ross Gibbs <laughs> getting the wrong cheers of what spectators here. It's a horrid day for football in Adelaide today and Gibbs finally gets it. Gives a smile to the fans at the southern end. And finally, after all that, play will get underway again. No, Max Crews waiting for Gibbs to drop back over the fence. car in the country to get the ball for you. The kick's very wide and it's out of bounds on the full. Sort of progressed across the ground then went from out of bounds to out of bounds. Just cut a corner on, on route. And the free kick by Daryl Hewitt at half forward. Comes straight in towards full forward. Davies this time, that's a better attack on the ball. Campbell tries to take it off hands, he can't get it. There's a bit of this scrambly football going on now. Players tending to dive on top of the ball. Only the very best ball handlers can handle it in this weather. But you see the slippery surface here at Football Park. In the mud, it's not too bad. The ball tends to stay still. Murphy's in there, fighting as he has all the time. Hanging on to Davies still. Davies is coming out of the pack. Naley picks it up. Back in towards Full Ball. Garten is going to be penalised for a push in the back. Here was Adam Garth. That was careless of the throw. Rick Davis just threw his leg. David. Yes, it was. Uh, both were bad mistakes. And uh, this one could cost a little more than the Davies one because uh, Eddie lines up to goal. Kick from 20 metres. As here's the big white one. The first to Max Eddie. And much needed goal to the Panthers now. 2-5. Trailing Glenelg. 8-5. 11 minutes into the second quarter. On both sides have kicked one goal this quarter. And Max Eddy taking advantage of the free kick then. South Adelaide have got to get some skill factor going. They haven't shown any ability thus far in the game to really get the ball from body to body and run it down the ground. And the rain is not going to help that. Although, as we well know, if you can play the game of football, you can get it in hand and get some sort of balance. It's very easy to dodge once you've got possession of the ball in this sort of weather. So they're not without some chance, but they've certainly got to lift a great deal. Rain abating somewhat. Wind continuing to bluster up, however, making it very difficult for players and spectators alike. Turn a hand. Couldn't control it. We saw tremendous skills from Naley in that kick in before when he came out of the pack. In these conditions, the way he handled that ball was nothing short of brilliant. Carey works into the front spot. Grenville went and left it behind. Again, players finding it difficult to get clear. So we've had about 12 minutes of play. Each side has kicked one goal in the second quarter. That flag indicating that the breeze is not strong, but I can assure you that it really is very strong at the moment. It changed from the northwest to the southwest, and it uh, brought a big, heavy shower with it at quarter time, and it really has made playing conditions very difficult. Bounce down in the centre square. A lot of players around the ball. Needs to be got out into the space. 
big Mark Naley going for the knock there. Pounded it some 20 metres down the ground. Garton recovering quickly for Glenelg. Well done, Adam Garton. He took nice movement. He picked that up. Third. But he's only kicked it back to the back player across centre. And that player, David Kapler. His kick long and strong up to half forward. Ball skidding over the top. Opportunity there for Murphy to come through. He's doing well in that half-back line. McDermott, he's down on the ground. And he's trying to look for a teammate too. Well done, Chris McDermott. Turn ahead it was. Christie. Christie's kicking out. That'll skid. Robert will run all the way to the boundary line. And it's out of bounds on the half-forward line. For South Adelaide, they're 2-5. The Milk 8-5 on 7's big lead. So in about more 60 metres around from the... Panther goal, that gentleman braving the elements at the moment. He's one of the very few that have no spectators. Tucked inside in the bleachers here at Football Park, sheltering from this heavy rain and very cold conditions. McDermott again in the action, boots it forwards. The Vickler does well around Marsh. They're going to get caught now. The two Bay players ran into one another. The kick from the Vickler is towards half forward. Murphy couldn't control that one. Wayne Stinger got it back to Gibbs, who Chris easily out of trouble, then puts a high one back towards the centre of the ground. Christie in front, couldn't control it. Marshall got it back to McDermott. Now Gary John needs support or needs to get the ball out. Can't do so on a pie stram to them. 36 points is the lead as players finding it increasingly difficult to get to their feet. McDermott hobbles out of that one. It's bad news. Let's hope he's okay. Maybe just a nerve that he's is the problem at the moment. Martin pushes it on to Dickinson. Dickinson runs into Wayne Springer. He tried to get boots the ball but couldn't succeed and again they stack up. So a bounce this time at centre half forward and neither side Robert having much success in getting any method into their football at the moment. No, it's just a very difficult ground to play on. Ball like a greasy peak, the surface of the ground like ice. Very, very difficult indeed. Naily, he can handle the ball though, that's well done. He kicks in towards full forward, but Garton coming across again. Saves the day for Gunnell. He just takes it out of bounds with him. Peter Carey, of course, he loves these conditions. He'll just pull along in this all day. He's got the ball skill and the ability. Davies and Carey, they've had a lot of battles. Davies has an air. He wouldn't have done that in days gone by. McDermott, he's right in the middle of the pack. Look for Chris McDermott, that's where you find him. Yes, he really has been one of the if not the most consistent of the Bay players this season. McDermott averaging 32 disposals per game. That's a fine effort. A lot of his work goes unnoticed, but he should be the first man picked in my side. Plenty of action in the square. Can the Bays get it clear? Yes, guess who? Chris McDermott again boots it out wide, going close to the line. It may have gone out on the floor. Brockhurst wants it that way. Simon his head from side to side and said no bad luck just bounced inside so there'll be a throw in this time in front of the scoreboard about 50 meters around from goal Roy smile in on Brockhurst's face as he came back he asked for a free kick i think they've got to earn a few of the south adelaide boys sort of grind their way back into this game if they possibly can there's six goals behind gary from behind smashing the ball forward hodgman coming in quickly trying to knock it on all anyone's doing is managing to slip it along the ground Simon, he can't get it either. He gets it out towards McDermott, he leaves it alone, then looks for a free kick. He's going to get it too, once more. Put the arms out, said, Ump, he's grabbed me. Coming as a fox. Half forward line. Steve Vicker from behind, ball flies on. Shane Butler's going to have to get back there quickly. He does. Just tapping it on, trying to get the control of it. It's hard to trap it, Davis, so they can pick it up. They're trying to put their hand on it, but she just keeps gliding away. No, you can see the ball. It's just glistening with that rain on it. It is uh, almost impossible in these conditions to handle the football. Henwood and Snavickler. Again, Hodgson in the action. Marshall lends support. Gets run down by Naley, or in the back, says the umpire. Naley doesn't believe that was the truth, but Marshall has it anyway. He's just on the attacking side of centre. Beautiful kick of the ball, David Marshall. Doesn't get much distance with that, but luckily finds Tony Hall in front. Positioning himself well, because this ball is dropping with the breeze, and Hall, using good common sense, to work himself to the front spot. Well, he's miles too far out to score, but he'll put it deep into attack. Seabone went off, and getting back Brooksby. It's off hands, and across comes Butler. Martin's running for him. Butler close to the line, goes longer than him, however. Dickinson dropping back. Well, no, Martin got back to it. Dickinson almost ran into him. Good shepherding by Steckel. Dickinson to Martin, and they're out of trouble. 
The kick is towards the centre of the ground. Max Eddy in front. Really difficult to hold that. That's definitely a throw as he scooped it off the ground to Michael Bennett. And Adam Garten will take the result in three kicks. It makes me cross when I see players do that because I think that should be called play on in this weather. When the game is at a disadvantage in weather, it's good team footy. That's what the game's all about. Michael Bennett from half back. South again towards the, the centre half forward position. They're changing their ruck with the centre half forward, Steckel and Christie. Daryl Hewitt, he's tackled too high. Going through that pack. Almost lucky to get away with holding the ball then. He was trying to barge a pack, and then he kicked it straight across the ground. What for? I don't know. Maybe he can fill us in one day why he did that. Kapler, Brockhurst, Campbell, he went before he had it, slipped straight through his fingers. He didn't keep his eye right on the ball. Player being held onto his gears, but he doesn't want it. Campbell with the wave. And I would think kicks a goal. He does. His first goal. So South Adelaide, they are grinding away slowly. They're gradually picking the base back. They're now three goals by Lamel 8 5. It worked very hard then, uh, Ruddy Campbell. Got the handball in the first instance, had it, then uh, just took his eyes off it and lost it. But battered up well and uh, slipped on it again. And that was a very fine dummy to get round. Sold it beautifully and then had no problems from just 20 metres out directly in front. The second goal for the quarter to the Panthers. They're fighting back. Five goals the difference now as we approach the 19-minute mark of the second quarter. Well, it's pretty bleak conditions here at Football Park. Everyone's shifted from the front part of the oval. They're all up under the grandstand. Deckel hitting the ball forward. Brockhurst off his body. Naley coming past. Couldn't quite get the ball. Murphy. He's been the rock of Gibraltar for Glenelg gets sent to half back. Simons to half forward. Butler underneath the ball. He's starting to come into his own. Former Mount Gambier boy. Be used to these conditions. But South Adelaide is certainly working to get back into this game. Glenelg did it so well in the dry conditions of the first quarter that perhaps they're sort of waiting for the next fellow to do it. You can get like that. And when your game sort of falls away and hard work is all that's required, then you can get into a bit of strife by relaxing a little. Mark Naley, official ball boy there. He brings it back to the boundary umpire. Two ladies sitting out on their own as Naley went to get it. And the only two, or no, there's another two close by that uh, are braving this rain at the moment. And everybody else tucked up in the grandstand. Daryl Hewitt onto the left foot, goes towards half forward. Murphy at the back. Almost could have been paid, although Christy did well to spoil at the finish. In fact, it was Adam Garten, not Murphy, and the uh, players throw themselves on it. There'll be a bounce. Centre half forward. The Bay's in front by 30 points. That lead was established in the first quarter. They went into the break at having a lead of 38 points. And just before that, the rain came. Carey takes the three. Cruz sets off, but uh, doesn't want him. Wants to get it clear of the defence. He does that by booting it towards centre wing. Flying from behind Henwood. Juggles it. In goes McDermott. She's done a lot of work at the bottom of the pack. Throws it out. But in the meantime, umpire Weston has whistled up play. Bounce at centre wing out of side. And conditions becoming just a fraction brighter at the moment. It got very dark there for about 10 minutes and was almost impossible to sort these players out on the outer side. Again, a bounce. 30 points in front, 21 min minutes gone in the second quarter. Conditions like this, Dave, that you can use the soccer tactics to get along this ground beautifully because the ball don't, won't hold the direction too much. Get your foot into it. And of course, you can't kick in danger. But the umpire looking for a free kick now. He's, I think he's found one for a high tackle then to David Fairclough. Here's Wayne Stringer. David Fairclough quickly handles it to himself. <laughs> it's a tricky manoeuvre. <laughs> <I'll see one. laughs> Up to half forward. Stringer's there again. So is Tony Hall. Not too many players in the Glenelg forward line. Most players are from centre up to the half forward for South Adelaide. There's only another bounce at the half forward for the South Adelaide team. Andrew Brock is big man for the wing. Almost all enough to be a ruckman out there. Players look here, he's just laying it down short. Murphy puts a hand on it. Fair close. In towards Davies. Cruz is with him. Davies tries to take it on the body, but Garton's there again. He really is playing like a small man. And he kicks out towards half back. Fair close. Somehow he's marked it. Fair close now, about 55 metres from goal. Kicks into the man on the mark. Hall gets the rebound. Hosden wanted it. The ball is loose. Chance for Naley. Court. The short kick, Davies. Well, at last. He's got his hands on the ball. 
slipped it into his chest that resulted from good work from Naley. And he's one of the few players at the moment who is having uh, any real effect on the ball and the handling of it. Davies now, his first kick for the afternoon. 15 metres out, make that 20 directly in front, and he booted his first goal. An important one for the Panthers. They really have plucked away in the second quarter. They've kicked three with it, and they've moved to 4-5 now, trailing the Bays 8-5. Well, Mark Bailey had a try at what I suggested. You might be able to do it a little while ago. That is, get the ball in hand and then try to dodge a little bit because it's very difficult to be tackled because the chasing player finds it very hard to get his boots into the ground to um, dodge with you. But a very good bit of play by the Glenelg defence. They put Mark Naley under a bit of pressure. Rick Davies just happened to be standing about 15, 20 metres further down the ground. And lobbed right in his arm. So South Adelaide down, just four goals behind. Rain ceased now as Empire Western gets the game and the progress again. A high tackle on South Adelaide player in Seckle and uh, he'll take it in the middle of the ground. Seckle and Christie changing at centre half forward, changing out of the ruck that is. Doing a reasonable job too, it's uh, difficult conditions for the big men. So much of the ball on the ground in these conditions. Bennett, now Butler, Paul Martin is on the end of that, comes back and goes towards half forward, Seckle drifting down, takes it, lays it off, on A, into towards the square, Davies and Christie, none can mark, Stringer, Wayne Stringer that is, Allen not playing today, boots it off the ground and puts it out of play, right forward pocket, and Elg in front by four goals, almost into time on of the second quarter. Down for kick three this quarter, the Glenelg's one. Garson in front, doing a roll, he does well too, that is a ruck, knock Ruckman, Kim Hodgson with an opportunity to run up the ball, he can't get the ball to sit for him, and Paul Martin taps it over the boundary line. We're at half forward for South Adelaide, on the member stand side here at Football Park, Kerry in front, Davies behind, Kerry lays it forward to Hodgman, well done, Hodgman up the line, Deckles back there, and he's going to get a free kick for interference from Tony Hall, he's hit in the back of the head. David Steckel, he's changing it centre half forward with his teammate David Christie, two big ruckman, South Adelaide working them from centre half forward. John Sneepick are playing at centre half back. Bennett to Christie, off his hand, Reed back there, Kapler straight over the top of that pack, Garton comes in, Murphy, now Glenelg with a chance. Murphy goes for the boundary line towards centre wing. Loose ball at centre wing, Butler should be first to get to it, gets a decent set too. Lays it back there, difficult to handball. Bennett runs himself into trouble in the form of copying and then goes back for the line. Well, no, we've made a change. Hodgman is off and Scott Salisbury onto the ground for his first run this afternoon. The Bay's in front by four goals. Might be much time on added in this quarter. Just four goals kicked for the entire term. Three to South and one to the Bay's. Rodney Campbell back to Bennett. He's in trouble. Marshall the tackler. Rolls over with it. And again a bounce. Just for the moment, the rain has abated. Not making conditions any easier though, I might add. And this ground now is very, very greasy indeed and that ball tremendously slippery. Kerry got it over the back. John's first there and he runs it out of play. So nothing happening at all at the moment except players just running the ball out of bounds. Need a good possession here, need a bit of good ruck work to see if Peter Carey can do it. He's there with David Steckel. He lets the ball run over the back, does Carey. The little players are there. Maynard picks it up, gives it to Wayne Stringer. Stringer towards full forward. Steve Ohm well underneath the ball. Running on towards the boundary line. Honours back there with Copping. And it's tapped out of bounds. Copping looking up quickly, thinking maybe he's going to free kick for a deliberate knock out of bounds. No such luck, Stephen. He's got to be Peter Mark a lookalike, David. Yes, the more and more you see of him, Robert, the more and more he looks like uh, Peter Marker. I like you like the uh, comparison of the two players. Yes, different players altogether. One of the great overhead mark, of course, Copping, whereas Peter Marker, perhaps not that good overhead, but a great worker and mover of the ball. Kick forward by Campbell. He goes up to Honor. Honor taking it out of bounds yet again. Of course, they've both been great players for Glenelg. Fantastic players for Glenelg. And Stephen Copping. Love those hands. When he puts them up, he took two great marks in the first quarter today. 
Here he's tapping over the back again to Maynard. Maynard gets his hand free eventually. Salisbury's on the ground. So he could have been pushed in the back by Fair Clay. He was open. He was holding the man decision to Gary John. John's now at half back for the Panthers. Direct play to the outer side. Bennett is loose over there. Chance for them to build here. Dickinson is in the centre of the ground. So speckled. But then it goes out wider. Eddie used his body to oust Garten. Goes after it again. It's awfully close to the line. Comes back inside Garten. Lost possession of the ball, but quickly got after it again. His kick was ineffectual, however. Chance now for Paul Martin. He runs into Murphy. Out of Murphy. Martin held without it. And he'll take the three at half forward. Paul Martin, the lightly framed speedy South Adelaide wingman, goes short. Pass is good. Steckle's got it. Steckle now just a little too far out to score. Breeze has dropped away to nothing just at the moment. Steckle looking to go with the long screw punt, but it slides off the side of his boot. Off the head of Gary Christie. Eddie first on the scene. Lost it. Fairclough hasn't. Hooks back with the left foot. Chance for Brockhurst. Carey late. Cruz. The handball was meant for Murphy for Simon, but didn't reach him. And again, players fall on it. And it bounced this time about 10 metres away from the goal. He had to put straight off Cruz's hands then. Got to hit the ball that wasn't there. A bounce down. We're almost at half time. About 30 minutes into the quarter. That was an opportunity for Naley to quickly get that kick away. It's Gibbs that kicks it now. Naley. Can he kick it? No. Kick it straight into Grenvold. High up in the air. Siren sounds. End of the second quarter. The Melbourne 8 5 53. Leading South Adelaide 4 5 29 on 7. Big league. South Adelaide 4 5. South Adelaide had a pretty good second quarter. They kicked three goals. We're playing under lights at the moment. Ball tapped back by Christie towards Naley. Brockhurst. So South Adelaide straight back into attack up to half forward. Opportunity for Max Eddy. Well clear of Adam Garten. Can he kick it straight? No. South Adelaide trying to repeat their feat of the first quarter when they scored a goal within 20 seconds. Max Eddy, that's a very careless bit of football. Kick in from the back pocket. Long and strong out towards Carey. Neither play he nor... His opponent, Christie, touching it. McDermott, he's on the ground still. Ferreting balls out. Simons, up to half forward towards Hall. He had a great first quarter on this half forward flank. Ball trying to one hand and it flies out of his hand. Picked up by David Kapler. Sorry, Darren Kapler. He goes into the centre of the ground. Eddie from behind this time. Flies off hand. An opportunity for Kernahan. Oh, he's done a grubber straight across the ground. Leading in the race, but now is Ross Kidd. Picks it up beautifully, swings back. Well done as Kernahan and Campbell go to ground. The pass from Gibbs finds McDermott. Arguably the best player on the ground the first half. I don't think we get too many arguments actually about that statement as he kicks it into the pocket. Hall at the back copping. Copping underneath in the direction of Hall again. Michael Bennett there does battle with him as does Brenton Honor. Tries to get it clear but Hall sits on him and there'll be a bounce. No, there won't. But the umpire's played it for a push in the back or a high tackle on Brenton Honor and he'll take it in the back pocket. Butler provides the run, the handball's in that direction, the kick to the outer side, looks for Martin, still on for him. Empire's seen a three, it's going the way of Glenelg, I think, and uh, Tony Simons will take it out there. The infringement was against Martin, and Simons, too far out to score, goes short, the lead is from Coffey, but he won't get that far. Butler cuts across him, Brockhurst played very well in the first quarter, died something somewhat in the second. Now it's on to McDermott. McDermott will go for distance into the square, getting back Brooksby. The ball was too long for Seabome as he let out. Marshall and Brooksby having a little tater tape, and Brooksby gets it clear. The handball's not a good one, set Naley up somewhat. In goes Bennett, twists out of trouble. Now Marshall, the tackler, they've lost it. Salisbury on the ground still. This is our Hodgman is still off. Or Tony Hall all alone. Tony Hall from 35 metres out, puts one in, but he's offline. Backed out of bounds on the floor. So no addition to the half-time score. At half-time, the Bays 8-5, led south 4-5. Ball to be brought in by Gary John. John's keeping it low and strong, that kick too. Hall up high. Brooksby tried to get it. He couldn't. Christie coming in. Christie's got it underneath him there somewhere. About three players on top of him as well. So there'll be a bounce down on half-forward for Glenelg. Peter Carey's had no mark effect on the game today. He did last week. And a couple of nice knocks. 
Good ball being knocked forward towards Dickinson. Dermot took a little back kick. I thought it was Maynard with a back kick to McDermott. McDermott with the arms out again. He's going to get a free kick for around the neck. The umpire looked at that twice. He was obviously thinking that McDermott was faking a little. He was watching that umpire then. He had a look. He put the whistle up, took it down. And he thought, no, definitely too high. Short kick. Ooh, the ball may be a little bit stick, stickier, but Naley, what great skills, David. Yes, Robert, he certainly has. He's handled the ball better than anybody else on the ground since it rained. He's kicked to the outer side. Kernahan against Martin. They both fall to the ground. Into lens support, Trent Grenbold. The handball finds Maynard. Maynard goes to the pocket, copping out in front. He's got this one. Couldn't reach him before, but that was a more successful pass. It was pretty well put. Popping in turn goes short. Who's he looking for? Seabom at the back. Won't get that far. Unloaded was Murphy. He looks as though he's playing an attack at the moment. Seabom flanked by Simons. The handball in that direction, but it was wider Simons. In Burrow Salisbury, the umpire sorts out a free kick. The Bickler will get it, and he's at centre half back. The Bickler, no. Murphy going back to centre half back on Steckel. The Bickler heads in that direction. Here's a chance for Murphy to mark, although he pulled out of that at the last moment. Any the chance, it came off his shoulder. He's been run down. The kick from Wayne Stringer is out wide. It will go out of play. But it's probably achieved the result that he was looking for. Still no addition to that half-time score. At quarter time, Glenog led by 38 points. At half-time, they led by 24. And it's out of bounds on the half-forward line. Max and Eddie had a couple of chances up there too on that half-forward line. Has been able to complete them. Here he's missed the ball completely. McDermott coming in. Handball not effective. Grenvold got a little back kick on the ball there as McDermott appears again. Take the ball off his boot. The umpire will bounce again. One thing about McDermott today, at least he's not full of mud. A number of time, times he gets on the ground and tries to ferret that ball out. Scary with a bit of better tap towards McDermott. Flicks the ball up to Gibbs. Gives a tackle whilst not in possession, and then he taps it out of bounds. So very ineffective play up in the forward line for South Adelaide. Place has come undone on Ross Gibbs' jumper, as you can see it. <laughs> Carey went high, got it back in the direction of McDermott. His handball not effective, or well done by Grenvold. Somehow got out of that pack. Boots it towards half forward. Christie in the band spot takes a good mark under these conditions. Wayne Henwood, who has had very little influence on the game at all today, stands the mark. And Henwood uh, was a quiet player last week in that Glenelg side also. A kick from Christie towards half forward. Murphy at the back runs it out of play. Murphy, Murphy, <laughs> in trouble with his name today. <laughs> it is very murky, and it's Michael Murphy that I was trying to refer to. Conceding quite a few inches to David Steckel, but Murphy player at centre half back McDermott as Steckel get, gets a kick forward out in front Cruz oh that's a fine mark Rick Davies has really had only one touch of the ball today that was the mark in the second quarter from which he goal but Cruz has done pretty well he kicks the ball into the centre half back position Murphy Murphy out wide to Marshall he's got that wide on the ground and certainly wide on the kick long kick forward from by Cruz to centre half forward off hand from Hall, but he's going to get a free kick for interference. He's at centre half forward. In the first quarter, this would have been pretty easy distance for him, but not now. That wind's not favouring that into the ground quite as much. Off Brooksby's head. Butler coming around the back. He's done a pretty good job in that back pocket since the rain came. Snee Bickler, he's looking for some space on centre wing. McDermott's going to get there first. But the ball is going to beat him out of bounds. Right in front of the coach's box. 8-5 to the milk, 4-5 to South Adelaide. Number 10, Chris McDermott. Figured prominently in this game today. Had 17 kicks and 10 handballs, and we're only, what, seven minutes into the third quarter. 27 possessions already, and uh, he's averaging about 32 for the year, so he's well above his average at the moment. Marshall gets the free, kicks for Copping. Clever tap over the top. Maynard the chance in the pocket, unloaded by Brooksby. Very close to the line. Brooksby steadies it. Now the umpire found the umpire signals. He got the message from the goal umpire. Got it a bit late. But uh, it definitely did appear from here that the ball had gone out of play. About 20 metres around from the Glenelg goal. The Bays kicked seven in the first quarter. Then the rain came. They managed only one in the second term. 
topping went up. Got it down to Maynard. Maynard has a pot shot at the goals, but it's drifting offline and out of bounds in that left forward pocket. This time, Robert, the throw-in will be at just about 10 metres around from their goal. So we're going from boundary line to boundary line at the moment. Clay's just kicking the ball forward. It's going to run a lot further today than it would normally. Snee Bickler in front. Butler's there. Played very well done by Butler as he gives it to Bennett. Bennett out towards centre wing. Whoops, Gareth Christie straight off his chest like a big board when it hit it. Martin around the corner. Kapler coming in. He's Jamrish and he's going to get the free kick. And that player with the free kick is David Kapler. That's the left footer. It was a low kick. It's carrying with a lot of power up to Hewitt, who's playing in the front spot. Not a bad place to be on the wet weather. Give it to Brockhurst, running through centre-half forward. He's got a chance as Brockhurst goes in short to Davies. Too short. Davies picked it up. What beautiful ball control. Back to Brockhurst. Brockhurst with control. It's a goal. Very well done, South Adelaide. Brockhurst, first goal. South Adelaide gradually whittling back Glenelg's lead. They're five goals, five. Trading Glenelg, eight, five. Oh, that was probably the best passage of play that South Adelaide has produced all afternoon some very good teamwork possession football it started in the centre and then it finished as Davies half followed that one and uh, Brockhurst running past got it back with kick number nine he's booted his first goal the Panthers are back in this now they've worried the base since quarter time they've just doggedly fought on the difference now is just three goals Peter Carey still on the ball he hasn't been off he's been up against David Steckel and Gary Christie all day it's Christie against him at the moment as Carey thumps it forward to Reed, Reed quickly to Marshall. Nice bit of play by Butler. Put his hand on Marshall and to stop that play. McDermott to full forward. Fist it on. Opportunity for Hedwood, but he cannot handle the slippery condition. And coming in is his opponent, John Stevickler. He just taps it through quietly from behind. So Stout 5-5. Five, five. Grinnell 8-6. Brooksby goes to Bennett. Bennett wanting to get on with it quickly. Has Dickinson short. Daryl Ewart will get it next. He's left unattended. So with, again, with possession football, South has crept forward. This pass is not as good, but it's well done. Honor did well then. He, the kick was a little short for him, and under pressure from Maynard, but he still managed the mark. Honor goes towards Naley. Loose checking by the base at the moment. Naley heads off, sold the dummy well, and easily got round Carey. Puts it into the pocket, looking for Davies at the back. Cruz couldn't hold that one. Gibbs gives him support. Now Garten. A promising move has been thwarted as Garten kicks it to the outer side and there's a strong mark. The Tigerish Scott Salisbury started on the interchange today and uh, he came onto the ground in the second quarter when Kim Hodgman left it. So Salisbury, with the aid of, of a 15 metre penalty, comes to centre wing. The kick now towards half forward. Johns has got to sit on the pack but didn't want to fly. Marshall almost had it. The Vickler took it, but his handle is not good as Reed dishes it out to Maynard. Maynard to Marshall. Marshall is through. Here's a chance for the Bays, and Marshall doesn't miss those. He bangs through his second. The Bays get their first from the third. They're 9-6, south of 5-5. Top action on seven's big league. Well, that's play at centre-half back then. South Adelaide in possession. John Sneebickler losing possession of the ball when he tried to give it away. It slipped off his hand. The South have been playing so well since it got wet. They've been able to keep the ball in some sort of control, but on that occasion they didn't. Maynard and Marshall getting hold of it, and away went Marshall. And when he gets the ball running into goal like that, as he showed in the first quarter, he just does not miss. So 9-6 to Glenelg, 5-5 to South Adelaide. Two goals to David Marshall, two to John Seabone. And nobody in the South Adelaide side to not double figures in goal kicking, that is. Philip Reid. Gets it out wide to Grenvold. Into the pocket they go. Copping against uh, Ono. Copping did it very, very well. Now goes short to Seabone. Too long for him. John's at the back of the pack. Cockers it off the ground to Brooksby. Intercepting Copping. Finally out of play. Difficult game for forwards to shine in today. Certainly is a backman's paradise. Horns, I would think, would be fairly happy with proceeding, certainly most ecstatic with that first quarter but you've seen that lead whittled down somewhat due to sheer persistence by the South Adelaide side, they really have battled hard the Bays are in front at the moment by 25 points, it's a pretty handy lead under these conditions but to their credit South have not stopped fighting, John Sabickler has been the key to their defence, he and Brooksby have both done well as has Shane Butler in the back pocket 
and they've made it very hard for the Glenelg forward. Bounce down in that forward pocket. Coughing, tackling on her. On her with the ball underneath him. Now by calling it up very quickly. He's prepared to bounce it in preference to giving the players a little bit longer to try to get it out. Maybe running the risk of having to give you a holding the ball decision or even a push in the back decision. Oh, well done. That's a beautiful take by Naley. Away he goes through half back. Up to centre wing. Christie's there. Christie's got it. And South Adelaide still looking pretty good. I like in this wet weather. It's a wobbly old kick though. Not good at all. Eddie's up on that half forward line and flicks it through his legs. Salisbury diving back on the ball. In comes Campbell for South Adelaide. And the umpire will bounce the ball. That's centre half forward. South moved that ball out of defence very well. And of course Mark Naley it is. For those great ball skills he has. He's kicked his hand on the ball. He does as much with one touch as some fellows can do in three. Daryl Hewitt. Davies coming out. He can't get much going for his little fella again. Naley. He's run up from the back pocket. We need a miracle goal from him. But no such luck for South Adelaide. Through from behind. They're 5-6, the Lilg 9-6, 18 points the difference. And just over 14 minutes gone as the ball comes back into play. Murphy against Christy. Murphy wins out on this occasion, did that pretty well. Kick towards Marshall. Johns again defends well and forces the ball over the line. Throw in centre wing, grandstand side. Lights are on at Football Park at the moment. I see it got very dark during that second quarter, almost impossible to pick up the players on the outer side. It's uh, sound thinking by the league. They've switched the lights on and it's made it a lot better for players, spectators and commentators alike. Not so for David Grenville on that occasion. He boot, as he boots that one straight out of play. The Nog have made a change. Tony Simons is off and there's McFarlane. It's out McFarlane on for the bay. Gary Johns has the free kick at half back towards half forward, covers about 45 metres. David Kapler had it and lost it. Wayne Stringer tries to burst his way clear, can't do it. Rodney Campbell in all sorts of trouble, being pressured by Grenvold. Neither can get it clear. So the umpire to bounce, that's umpire Weston. No, is he going to play for it? No, he's going to bounce it. On the little undecided there, he came in tapping his shoulder for a moment, but I thought he was going to play a free. But the bounce is at centre wing. And a dow struggle it is. Carey decides to take it to somebody. His handball does nothing. Naley, he was going to tap it down the Brockhurst, but he gave it a bit too much juice. It was straight out of bounds at 100 mile an hour past Brockhurst. Carey from behind. Tries to tap it towards Gold Dickinson. And there he had it quite a good first quarter, David Dickinson. Pretty quiet since. Quietness in terms of getting the ball, but on the other hand, we haven't done too much to through the centre of the ground since the first quarter. And maybe Dickinson doing some pretty good work out there that's going unnoticed by we commentators up here. Butler coming in quickly, runs past it. Naley coming in, trying to kick it off the ground as McDermott put a hand on it. And McDermott will take a free kick for kicking in danger. Peter Carey just relay the ball back to him. McDermott playing a very sound game. Kicks directly at the goal front. Seabone coming out. Fisted away then by Christie. Picked up by Dickinson now, he gives it to Butler. Had a wonderful game, Butler, this quarter time. A kick over the top, giving Max Eddy the run of it. In comes Murphy. Oh, good balance, Murphy. Rode the bump well, then backed up by Garton. Eddy, in fact, hurt himself on the bump that he had with Murphy. In comes Garton again. He thumps it back to the centre. Dickinson's there. Garton goes right on with him. Just about lays him to rest. Beautiful handball by Captain to Naley. And the little fella has scored his first goal. Down at late 6-6, still coming at Glenelg on 9-6. Once again, a fine passage of football by the Panthers. Uh, that series of handball in these conditions was excellent. It's been the thing that most players have found it difficult to get the ball to its target. They didn't miss on that occasion. Naley certainly has lifted in this third term. That was his 16th kick. He's been a good player. Dropped out of it a bit in the second quarter, but is coming back strongly in this third. So the Panthers, they're 6-6 now, trailing the Bays 9-6. Steckel come onto the ball to replace Christie. And oh, nice knock too as he got it straight down to the small fellow there, Hewitt. Kicked off the ground though by Wayne Stringer. Henwood coming in quickly. He's run past the ball. He doesn't like these conditions at all. Brockhurst in there fighting. Underneath it is Marshall. So there'll be a bounce down on center wing. One of many bounce downs we've had today. Glenelg has certainly got to start getting a little bit more desperate. 
desperate in the fact that they've got to get the ball out, not just dive on it, they've got to get in there and try to do something with it to see if they can get some teamwork operating. Gary John's knocking the ball to Campbell. Brockhurst now, just fiddling with it. So he kicks to Brockhurst as he's pushed in the back. I think he likes kicking to this end of the ground as Andrew Brockhurst for the first quarter. He did well. Oh, see the handball. That's not a handball. Players just don't seem to work out that it's wet, David, and that you've got it a little bit harder. Yes, it's uh, sliding off the hand, Robert, and uh, very hard to control it. That was an awful attempt by Andrew Brockhurst. On the throw in, it's Steckle that got the tap in the direction of Naomi. It rebounds to Steckle. He does well to get a kick to it. Christie, Murphy from behind, Salisbury in to lend support. McFarlane just on the ground, fight for it. And there'll be a bounce at centre half forward. Rain falling again, much light, more lightly than it did in that second quarter, late in the first when we were deluged here at Football Park. McFarlane softens it off the ground, but in the meantime, the umpire has sorted out a free kick. They're holding the man decision, and it's in favour of little Mark Naley. Now, Naley's just booted one a few moments ago. Maybe fractionally too far out to kick this one. But uh, see the Panthers have clawed their way back into this game. Difference is 18 points. If he could kick a goal here, he'll be back to 12. He's not going to quite make the distance. Up off hands and a rush point. 6-7 then the Panthers, 9-6 the Bays. We're approaching the 20-minute mark of the third quarter. And surprisingly, Robert, we've got a decent game of footy on our hands, albeit in difficult conditions. We certainly have. Mark Daly lifting now. He's providing a little bit. The, the little players for South Adelaide, I remember a few years ago when Hayden Button was the coach. They used to play this game of kicking it across the ground and keeping it to each other very well, keeping your way. And they're doing it well this afternoon. And the players like Butler and Daly that are doing it. And it's... I think it's the sort of game you play in this wet weather too. Just to get it out into the space a little bit, give yourself a run at it. David Kapler it is. Naley on lead. Look at that overhead. He's a freak, the little fellow. He's got beautiful control of the ball. He took one a moment ago that someone threw back to him with one hand. The ball's quite slippery for everybody except Mark Naley, that is. South need a goal urgently. Oh, beautifully timed kick. Is it straight? It is straight. Straight through the middle. Two goals to Mark Daly. South Adelaide 7-7. Glenelg 9-6 on Sevens Big League. Five performances from Mark Daly in the third quarter. He's lifted his game and in doing so has brought South Adelaide now within 11 points of the base. Wind condition I'm not sure about. It's blasting and it's sometimes it seems to be coming from the southwest and other times it seems to be blowing across the ground but it's a real game of footy now just 11 points in it 21 minutes into the third quarter well can peter carey do something big steckle's done well but davies certainly taught them a bit about the ruck play they're trying to find a teammate all the time christy coming out he can't get it carey's back there now though in, in defensive action he picked up and just handled wildly by Salisbury. Kurt hand off the ground into the space Bennett looks as though he's going to get their first ball South Adelaide. He just runs it out of bounds, but he's going to get a free kick as Tony Hall came in late as he popped and, and he went to pick up that ball and he was pushed right in the middle of the back. And Michael Bennett from half back. Looking for Christie at centre half forward. What a great job the big fellow's done. Picked up and cleared there by like Stringer. Al um, Wayne Stringer, I think it was, kicked the ball back. Butler, by geez, having a game and a half. Some of his very best form. Schneebickler coming across the ground. Taking a chance of all chances, David. Well, yes, thought was danger that one, Robert, but fortunately they may get out of it. Seabone handball went back in the Grenvold direction. No, they're not because the free has been paid against Brockhurst. And David Grenvold has it at right half forward. Maynard's loose in the pocket, but he's not going to go that way, I don't think. And no, he's going to the square. Maynard not happy. The kick is into the square and Henwood. Oh, he's had a quiet one today, but that's a fine mark by Wayne Henwood in these conditions. Took it well at the second attempt, and now the chance for the steadier that the Bays need. 11 points in it. Henwood was one of his few touches for the day. This is only his third kick. Hasn't... He's booted one. Make that two. Two to Henwood. The Bays in front by 17 points. 10-6 for South. 7-7. That was a great mark by Wayne Henwood after the free kick at half forward. 
Peter Maynard critical of David Grenvold for not kicking that ball to him and it was certainly looked as though it was a certain kick but when one saw what happened in the end with Henwood going up into the air to take a mark he hasn't even looked like taking a ball at all today hardly but on that occasion he did magnificent mark so Glenelg not to be um, beaten aside easily they're just coming back hanging in there can they now perhaps produce a little bit of that play they played early, a little bit of teamwork? They're just holding on, but they don't seem to have any of that real urgency about their game at the moment. 10 6 of A, 7 7 South Adelaide. Almost 24 minutes gone in the third quarter. South Adelaide go into attack. Chance for McFarlane. Intent on socking it off the ground, but got it to Kernahan. His pass is not well directed. He was looking for Carey, but it flew off the side of his boot and went straight in the direction of Darrell Hewitt. Hewitt goes to distance into the pocket. Davies against Cruz. The big fella lumbering after it. Gets a handball over the top. Max Eddy, the opportunity now. Gets around one tackle. Forced onto the left boot. Brings it back in towards half forward. Brockhurst went early. Almost had it. Grenvold in to compete with him. And finally a bounce. Good play by Rick Davies in the pocket. But unfortunately for the Panthers, unable to capitalise on it. So a bounce at centre-half forward. There must be about 25 players around the bounce. Christie against Carey. The Bays will run it clear. It finished with Wayne Stringer. Dickinson attempting to get to it. Or Hall slipped, had it and slipped. The top one high, says umpire Fram. And Tony Hall, a little lucky, takes the free just on the defensive side of centre. He kicks the centre-half forward. Steve Bickler's there, brought away by Henwood. Oh, that was nearly a very good take by Peter Maynard. He falls on top of the ball then. He just keeps it in the area. That's the sort of thing I was talking about a moment ago and I was talking about Glenelg being able to get the ball out of the pack. He's just hanging on to it at the moment. Peter Maynard's come up the worst for wear then for diving on top of that ball. He had balance. He could have perhaps just tapped it on and into the space ahead of him and given himself an opportunity to run on even his teammate to get at it. Kaplan with a long handball to Dickinson. Now South Adelaide going forward through Gary Johns to centre half forward. Garton setting himself behind. Eddie putting his foot right in his stomach and gives clears to Carey. Carey takes it. On the defensive side of the centre, a little undecided which way to go. He's got David Kernahan out there. Play steadying it down at the moment as we're into time on by about 30 seconds half forward where Henwood can't mark it trying to get through with Maynard and McDermott gone a little quiet in this third turn and Naley has come into the game for the Panthers there'll be a bounce on that outer side the lights making it much easier to identify players over there rain still continues to fall but pretty lightly at the moment Salisbury doesn't gain much distance, it's gone very high. Brockhurst against Grenvold, fisted on by Brockhurst, but taken well by Wayne Stringer. Here's a chance for Maynard, no, it slipped past him, coming out to meet it to Seabone. Johns runs himself into trouble, Seabone need, needs help. Marshall provides it, but it's three on one. Naley finally clear, good work again by the South Adelaide defence. Naley puts it on the deck, then goes short. Darrell Ewart will take it in the centre of the ground. Ewart plays on, a high kick searches for Christie. With him is Murphy. Neither can take the mark, although Christie butters up well. The handball was in the direction of Eddie, but he's been robbed by McFarlane. And McFarlane finds Carey in the centre of the ground. Carey took me back hit, and around into an attack. Will fist it on by Henwood. Out wide into the pocket. Gary Johns is up. He was down a moment ago. He hit the ball on long and strong to Steve Bickler. Well taken, John Steve Bickler. Kept his body right in line with that ball. He clears the Steckle. Salisbury hanging on to slow him down. Steckle across to the centre of the ground. The ball's going to skid on. He runs quite some metres on. Kicked on by Martin. That was well done, actually, to Butler. Butler coming up from the back pocket. It's all South Adelaide up the outer side. Dave is just standing in the goal square. As Kapler leads out. D Darren Kapler it is. Now, Davies one-on-one -on -one in the square. He and Cruz. It's a magnificent kick. He hit the post, would you believe? Hit the post from the half-forward flank. What a great kick that was. South a little unlucky. 7-8 uh, they are to 10-6 for nil. Oh, what a strong kick from Darren Kapler. Carey from Gibbs. Benvold leads, but Carey steadying things down. Now goes short as Tony Hall's on a lead. 
at the back Christie around Hodgman beautifully now puts it long in for Davies Carey getting back Cruz there to assist or Davies at the back walks into the goal well done Rick Davies the one that the Panthers needed he's booted his second 8-8 now South Adelaide trailing when old 10-6 top action on sevens big league well, that was certainly very well done then by Rick Davies he calls it a long kick in from Gary Christie. And when he realised the ball wasn't going to carry properly, instead of flying in and pushing the player in the back when he couldn't make the distance because of the inaccuracy of the kick, he took the chance that the ball would slide off the top. Of course, there was a pretty high chance of that happening this afternoon. And it did just that then. He just took it. Away he went to the goal square. So South Adelaide now 10 points behind. They've come back from a large deficit of 38 points at quarter time. And they're right in with a chance. Three and a half minutes of time on have been played in the third quarter. Ten points in it as Deck have got it forward, but only as far as Salisbury. His kick was smothered, and there's the siren. To end a good third term for South Adelaide. And at three-quarter time, Glenelg 10-6-66 lead the Panthers 8-8-56. Start of what promises to be an exciting last quarter here at Football Park. The Bays in front by 10 points. South Adelaide has fought back from a deficit of 38 points at quarter time. Marshall kicks it forward. Dickinson takes it for the Panthers. They're first into attack. At the back it was Garton that got fist on it. Martin takes it. Oh, Eddie went through strongly but left the footy behind. Garton dishes it out. Nobody can get it clear. And I'm sure that umpire Weston will be forced to bounce. So a bounce at centre half forward. The lights are on it here at Football Park. It was very, very dark during the second quarter and we had a deluge of rain just on quarter time. Conditions almost impossible. Very wet ball as you can see and very greasy park. The players have done well. Deckel gets it, bangs one in towards the goal. It's an important shot, but he's just offline. A goal would have been what the doctor ordered for the Panthers. One point was the result. 8-9 then, trailing the Bays, 10-6. Graham Cause kept his players with him for a long time at three-quarter time. They came out early before the game. Came out early at half-time, rearing to go. Not at three-quarter time. Here's big Peter Carey now, working hard to get across to the ball. He's docking it on off the ground. Oh, Butler's there again. He's been magic in this wet weather. He definitely comes from Mount Gambier, there's no doubt about it. But he's playing in the wet all his life. I don't know where Naley comes from. He comes out of the uh, rabbit hole all the time. He's appearing since half-time everywhere. So Tony Simon's coming on, on the ground again as David Grenville goes off after a heavy contest at centre-half forward. Looks like he's hurt his shoulder. He didn't go through the interchange gates either, so he's in a bit of strife, I'd say. Christie up there. McDermott. Hodgman's back on the ground. His kicked over, over half forward. Oh, good mark. No, not paid to Copping. Looks as though he juggled that from here. He's not happy, Stephen Copping. Pay much though, just a stiff upper lip, that's what we could see of it, David. <laughs> well, I thought he had enough of that, Robert. Gee, under these conditions, very unlucky not to get paid the mark. Bounce, bays into attack. Naley, who had a magical third quarter. Hodgman twists out of trouble. Doesn't get any meterage with the kick. Reed does well, over the shoulder, now called to play on. He's deep in that pocket, puts one in towards the goals on it. Almost got a fist on it, but it went across the face anyway and out of bounds. Throw in in the left forward pocket. Well, they'll look to have this game sewn up at quarter time, but through sheer per persistence, South Adelaide have fought back. And this time the umpire will bounce at centre half forward. The difference is nine points. Eight nine South Adelaide, Glenelg 10 6. The bounce is about 30 metres from Glenelg goal. Just tap forward. McDermott's there again. He controlled that very well, too. The kick floating in towards the forward pocket across the goal face. Gary John's coming across quickly. He just lays it out of bounds yet again. A little 10 6. South 8 9. Nine points the difference. A little having to do the hard work now to see whether they can just grind their way to a little bit further, to be a little bit further in front. Henwood working hard. I think he's hit a player around the head and he's exuberant for that ball. And Gary Johns has got the free kick. He's in the back pocket. John's now to take the pressure off the Panthers. Let's see if they can build something up from here. He's a little unsure where to go. He's coming across the face of goals. Dickinson have made the space. And that's a pretty well put kick. Dickinson. Look at high to centre wing. 
Kernahan got fist on it. The handball from Tony Hall was smothered beautifully by Bennett and Martin. They combine again. Although Martin runs himself into trouble, then twists out of it delightfully. The kick is to half forward. Garten again fisting at Sia. Murphy got a touch on it. Steckel tries to get it off the ground as held in doing so will take the free. Dickinson's off. Well, the handball's just wide of him. Marshall may run him down, though. Superior pace by Dickinson. Puts it back in towards the full forward area. Davies pushing and shoving. Here's a chance. Proctor shoots around the corner. Oh, but he's dragged it back far too much. Put too much angle on it. And the ball has drifted across the goal and gone out of bounds in the left forward pocket. Two very good bits of play then by Davies. He first his body work to get the ball over the top. Then he made a pass for Brockhurst. And Brockhurst has bungled. You want to cut that leg off. He had a chance there. Ball out of bounds again. South Adelaide have got to take advantage of every opportunity, of course, as do Glenelg, because there's not a lot of them. And when you get those chances, you need to make the most of them. Out of bounds the forward pocket. Davies is going to do the ruck work on this occasion. Ball over the back towards Naley. Glenelg too strong, though. McDermott in front of the pack clears the centre wing. He kicked it out of bounds on the full, in fact. Very awkward kicked in by Chris McDermott. Something that Glenelg don't need. They've got to become a little bit more efficient. Short kick forward is not good. Gibbs coming over the top and fisting out of bounds. 10-6 the base, 66, 8-9, 57 South Adelaide. Five and a half minutes into the last quarter. Rain continues to fall and the, the wind blows up from the southwest. Blowing across the ground now. Of course, Glenelg were favoured by it in the first quarter. Conditions were dry then and they kicked seven goals five. Steadily south have pegged them back. This kick from Naley goes only as far as Gibbs. They need just a fraction of luck, an ounce of luck from the South Adelaide and they, they could be in front of... There's a whopping kick from Gibbs. He's put it over the centre of the ground. Lurking at the back was Michael Bennett. This is out of handball. Simons did well, however, to get it to McDermott. He hooks around the corner. From behind Johns, Marshall soccer's off the ground. The Bickler's going to be first there, then gets it back to Butler. Butler, one of the best South Adelaide players today. His short kick has Naley at the back. It came from the hand of Christie. Here's a chance for the Panthers as Naley puts it to half forward. Or almost Eddie. Picked up by Darren Kapler. Strong kick of the ball, but he gets caught. Out to brother David. David in trouble. Taps it back to Steckel. Steckel to Darren Kapler. Back it comes to Steckel again. And he puts one on the way. It's going close, but not close enough. And he goes. They get points. 8-10. Our South Adelaide. Glenelga 10-6. The difference is eight points. First time we've seen Darren Kapler get caught today. I thought he was off then on one of his big runs with the big long left foot. And Steckles kicked his second point for the quarter. The kick into the outer side. Fisted away to McFarlane. McFarlane to centre wing. Player running at the ball was Salisbury. Snee Bickler. Doing a good job at centre half back now. He made a couple of bungles in the third quarter though. His ball getting can't be questioned. Naley, no more can hit. His. He's in great form. The light's showing up quite clearly now. It's getting very dark again. Gibbs gets it out towards Murphy. And Murphy gets it further out towards the uh, advertisements on the boundary line. And there's the lights at Football Park. So it's not too bad for us here. But it's a bit dark in other parts of Adelaide. Caring, just fisting it forward. Knocked on towards Naley. Oh, he's got good control. The little fellow tries to keep the ball moving. Picked up by Hodgman. Hodgman towards the boundary line. And it runs out of bounds on the eastern side on the full. We approach the eight-minute mark and there's a free kick to Gary Johns. Steckel makes the lead. Although a half-hearted one now. The chance for him in the pocket. Out in front was Wayne Stringer. Got hands on it but couldn't control it. Out of play. About 55 metres, 60 perhaps, around from the South Adelaide goal. The rain starting to fall much more heavily now. Going to make it difficult for the Panthers to peg back this eight-point lead, but since the rain, they really have worked hard. And the players of the ilk of Naley and Butler have been handling the ball, sometimes as though it was dry. Free kick played. It's against Carey. Gary Christie. Into the pocket he goes. Naley's down there. Went one-handed on that occasion. Campbell in to assist. Oh, there's a Glenelg player. Holt. Caught Cole. Holding the ball. 
from the free kick. The strong tackle was from Rodney Campbell. And he's got an important kick now, about 55 metres from goal. Off goes Davies. He's heading in that direction. Oh, it's much too long for him. And Cruz takes the mark at the back. Plays on as Davies argues with the umpire. No, he's forced to come back, Robert. And he'll kick from the back pocket. The play on now as McFarlane receives the handball. Runs up towards, uh, towards centre-half back. Looked like a missed kick to me, but it went straight to Carey. Carey comes across the ground. He hasn't found the body of Gibbs. Martin's got pace. He can get free of Gibbs. He's got to beat three of them, does Martin. Gibbs has got a hand on it. Martin maybe can hold it in the area for a while. That'll be good enough for South Adelaide. Well done. Well done indeed by Paul Martin. Peter Carey's kick just a fraction off. That's all it has to be in this weather. We'll have another bounce this time on the western half forward flank. It's almost a bounce. Went straight to McFarlane. Round his body towards Kapler. Hodgman's there. Salisbury comes skidding in after it and sits on top of the ball. He'll catch one. There'll be another bounce. 5,003 people braving the elements to come to Football Park to witness this clash between South Adelaide and Glenelg. And considering the conditions, they've seen a relatively good game of football. Umpire Weston having harsh words to Gary Christie. Carey wants the free, but he's not going to get it. It's going to be a bounce. It's a half forward right for the Panthers. Huge number of players around the ball. Must be freezing down the other end of the ground as Daly tries to burst his way clear. Play on is the call. Diamond's close to the line, gets a boot on it. But before doing so, the umpire signaled it was out of play. We've got John Seaboam and Philip Brooksby down the other end. There's one spectator. They're showing a tremendous amount of courage, if not insanity. His brolly's gone. He's, uh, he's the only one that I can see <laughs> down on that lower deck at Football Park. And I hope he's enjoying it. <laughs> That's really getting your money, getting value for your money, eh? Naley, twisting and turning out of trouble, then puts it in short. Martin called out by David Kapler, and he's got it at centre-half forward. Now the chance for the Panthers as Kapler's off. Out at wide it goes. Max Eddy racing at it. Butler a long way down from his back pocket. In pursuit goes Murphy. Butler needs support, or can he do it alone? All brought to ground. Play on as the call. Finally, Eddie taps it out to Dickinson. Dickinson puts in the steady. A Christie, the chance. Oh, he's got it. Trees a Christie at centre half forward. Oh, what a vital kick for the Panthers. Eight points in it. He's kicking into a stiff breeze. Rain is tumbling down from the most vital kick of the afternoon to date. Gary Christie from 35 metres out directly in front would reduce the lead to two points if he can do it. Drop punt, drifting offline. Or oh, get a point. Just kick three points in the quarter. No goals. The Bays haven't kicked any score. And the Panthers have dragged themselves now to within seven points. It's a tough kick then too. Breeze coming across. Rucking all day. Gary Christie required to do the lot. It's a magnificent kick in two by Max Cruz. A screw punt. David Marshall round his body. Finds a bit of space up at half four. That's where he came from. Reads behind Butler. Butler just tapping the ball towards the boundary line. The umpire's going to give a free kick for a deliberate knockout of bounds. There's no doubt, I would think, that that wasn't the case. Tony Hall taking the free kick. He comes towards centre-half forward. Sneebicker from behind. Henwood in front. Almost marked the end. Oops, there's the champ again. Mark Naley to Martin. He dropped it. And it held, then held on to the man. That's bad play, Paul Martin. Naley nearly got them going again. Kick out in front of Henwood. By gee, that ball's bounced on some 20 or 30 metres. Philip Brooksby. He's looking for a pretty strong breeze. I think he might get it too. He did. It was going out of bounds on the four by about five metres and the wind's blown it back inbound. Yes, they were lucky. They were very unlucky before when that Naley handball, was, which was a superb one, bounced off the chest of Martin. Look at Marshall threading his way through. Puts a long shot in the wood, the goals, but it's offline. The first score for the quarter to the Bays, they're 10-7. The lead now is eight points. South Adelaide are eight goals, 11. Philip Brooksby to the outer side. Towards the boundary line. Did Salisbury touch it? No, says the umpire. Uh, he'll take the free kick, half-forward flank. He gets it back in quickly to Seaboam. 
Michael Bennett backing up as it ran through Seabone's leg. He kicks the centre wing. Martin out there getting in front position. He did that very well indeed then on David Kernahan. The ball's run out of bounds. Gary Christie, Peter Carey. They've had a great duel all day. Christie just missing a goal a moment ago. Hutchinson going back to centre half forward where he was resting. Ball dropping in short. Marshall coming in strongly. Putting his hands on it. And he can't get it out of the hands of David Kernahan. They will have another bounce at half forward. It's Peter Carey. Many years of great service for the Bays. Continuing great form this year. Let's, let's, let's not. He thumps it in towards the centre. David Dickinson, South Adelaide into attack. Garth at centre half back. Player coming across there was Steckel. Kicked it wildly forward. Big push in the side then by Campbell. Some people thought it was in the back. Ross Gibbs was one of them. <laughs> he was turning around looking at umpire and he's signalling now. You're right, Robert, that the push was in the side. And uh, consequently a bounce instead of a free kick. We're just eight points in it now. We're at the 15 minute mark. Can South Adelaide pour themselves back in front? Wayne Stringer says no for the moment at least as he boots them out wide and he's put it out of play. Just on the attacking side of centre for the Bays. Rain ceased again. Conditions are being quite bright just for the moment. Although there's an enormous amount of cloud and rain in the vicinity. Christie against Carey. Here he stopped in his tracks. Christie took it, got a boot on it, forced it out of play. Mark Naley, the top kick getter for South Adelaide, South Adelaide today. He's had 24 kicks. And I would think Chris McDermott probably for Glenelg. 22 kicks. They've both been fine players. Although McDermott has dropped out of the game somewhat since halfway through the third quarter. And as a result, the Bays have struggled. He, up till then, he'd done all the ferreting work. Really got them moving. But with his demise... Uh, South Adelaide have got back into the game. Well, that's not a good kick from Darrell Ewart. It went off the side of his boot. And a little lucky not to go out of bounds on the full. 16 minutes gone, and Bay's in front by eight points. Halfway between centre wing and half forward for South Adelaide. Peter Carey, hand on hip, just having a look around, thinking all the time. Decided to take that one. Philip Reid knocks it on. Quick kick forward by Marshall. He gets it up to the half forward line. Wayne Henwood on the body. And his fourth kick, I think. Comes in towards centre half forward. Fisted away by Butler. Brooksby. Going like a thrashing machine with his feet there, trying to keep that ball away. And a right foot, then a left foot, then finally another right foot goes out of bounds. So Ruck's being expected to run a long way. Peter Carey still recovering from centre wing on the other side from the last throw in. He's going to get across to the centre. It's interesting to see Gary Christie staying back on him today across the centre of the ground. Gives South Adelaide something to kick to out of defence. A lot of teams don't do that. They tend to leave Carey and Ruckman of his like standing across the centre of the ground unopposed. South Adelaide are quite happy to have Henwood go for the knock and Steve Ickler's with him. And that's what's going to happen now. Over the top go Henwood. A scoop up in the air. Then a bit lucky not to be called a throw against Michael Bennett. Brockhurst keeping his body right on line with that ball. Well done. Butler gets a quick run out. And the free kick to Brockhurst. He went for that ball. Well, David, through that pack. Been a fine player for the Panthers, Robert. Very good first quarter, a little quiet in the second, but then his last half has been very good indeed. 13 kick to Andrew Brockhurst as Darrell Hewitt takes the pass. Puts the Panthers in towards the centre of the ground. Look at the rain glistening on the ball as John McFarlane sat at the back of the pack and took a nice mark. McFarlane, who came on in the third term, kicks them back into attack. The Bickler one-handed, got a fist on it, and put it out of play. So it's eight points the Bays in front. Remembering, of course, that they led by 38 points at quarter time. It's the Bickler against Henwood. Reed, who's been a pretty quiet player today. Players fall on it, and umpire Shram will bounce. Reed's now blowing up pretty strongly. It appears to be favouring a little bit the end that the Bays are kicking. Although, generally, it's, uh, it's going to that outer side that's virtually across the middle of the ground. Naley working very hard. Kernahan tried to get it clear. Throw in. 
superb play that was by Mark Daly then. Not falling on the ball, but Timmy just to work it through players, letting it skid, keeping his hand on the ball, just looking for the slightest of opening. Over the back came Tony Hall. He's been a very quiet player too since he hasn't been able to mark the ball. Obviously, when the marking is such a big part of your game, it obviously makes you feel more confident as well when you're taking a few. But this hard work business on the ground, it's a different part of the game altogether. Oops, players just falling over then. Now McDermott, back in the game. Quick kick forward. Well read Stephen Copping. He dropped back very quickly when he saw McDermott come around that pack. And he, when the kick flewed a little off the boot, Copping was there to get it. A very acute angle. Only looking at about two metres of the post. He's kicking off the outside edge of his boot, curving in towards the goal. Comes down in the goal square. There's a chance for Galil players to kick it off the ground. A lot of desperate footy going on up there. I would have thought the South Adelaide players would have had it over the, the goal line, but I suppose maybe they're not going to give anything away. They're only eight points behind, and they don't want to make it nine. It would be worse if it was another goal. Steve could try to knock that through. Hall picking it up off the ground. He's tackled. Chance for Brockhurst in defence. Michael Bennett. He's very slow getting it to boot, but he's got the strength to hold balance under the tackle. Martin back at the centre, Carey's there. And there'll be a bounce in the centre of the ground. Still eight points the difference, we've gone past 20 minutes. Bay's hanging on. South Adelaide need a goal quickly. We've only had three points, four points in fact, kicked the entire 20 minutes. Three to, Glen three to South Adelaide and one to Glenelg. So there'll be very little time on. Fought out there was Murphy, lost it, holding the ball. Should be the decision, and that's the way the umpires paid it. So the three is to South Adelaide's David Steckel. Campbell offered a lead, but he's gone short. Oh, gee, that's dangerous. Martin, yes, paid. Perhaps a little luck. No, paid the free kick. Wasn't paid the mark. As Marshall came in late and tackled high. So Martin from centre wing. They gained very little distance with that pass. Oh, he's around Marshall. No, caught. Two bad mistakes by Paul Martin in this last quarter. May cost South Adelaide dearly. He got a handball from Naley early, and it fell off his chest, and there, just trying to do a fraction too much, get around the man on the mark, and he's lost the ball. Marshall will thump it back into the pocket. Henwood at the back, takes it at the second attempt, wants the mark, and is paid. The Vickler remonstrates with the umpire. Henwood, kick number five. Obviously thinks he can go all the way, but she would take a mighty kick from there. 50 metres out with a heavy ball. Going to put it into the square. In front was popping at the back hall. High tackle. Play called on. Rooksby soccer's off the ground. Naley the chance. Well, the base supporters wanted a free, but they didn't get it. Naley gets clear. Back to centre wing it goes. At the back, David Kepler. Kicks it forward, chance now for the Panthers. Eddie out in front of Garten. Campbell there to help him, or Eddie does it alone. Gets clear, brings it across ground. Perhaps a little long for Darren Kepler. McFarlane, more chance now for Darren Kepler. He's clear, through to the half forward, he goes. Bends it in towards the goals. Oh, and it's drifted off. And it's gone out of bounds on the full. For a moment, Robert, it looked as though it was going to be a goal but the wind got hold of it and shoved it out of bounds. He kicked one three and two out of bounds on the full. He kicked one goal two and one out of bounds on the full in the first quarter. He had a chance then, but he couldn't punch the ball in straight. He only had to lob it in the square. Davies had led for him, did everything right, opened up the space, blow me down. He couldn't get the kick away. One of the few times too. Gibbs with a long kick back to the centre of the ground. Ball fisted on towards Stallsbury. He knocks it a bit further. Daryl Hewitt coming through. There's Naley again. Oh, what a wonderful last half that man's had. Oh, great mark, Gary Christie. That is a fine mark. Ball wobbling every which way. He kicks it into the pocket. Campbell's there. He's tackled whilst not in possession. He missed the mark. And was then dragged off the ball. So he'll take the free kick. And he's kicking into the teeth of the wind. It's a very difficult kick from this position on football park. Taking much, he's just going to let his leg run. He's got it away very well, right into the square. Eddie in front of the pack. Now Hewitt diving on top of the ball. Garson kicks it straight into the man. Papler coming in. 
Stringer gets the handball away to Reed. He's pretty desperate as he gets it forward up towards the halfback. Well, Johns is there. He's going to rebound for South Adelaide. Straight towards Christie. Christie in front, offhand. Now an opportunity for Garen Kapler. And he's kicking out of bounds on the ball again. Oh, yes, they're not making most of their chances. They've had a couple here late. Darren Kaplan's had both of them. That one was a difficult one on his wrong foot under pressure, but the one before wasn't. He was clear at centre half forward and could have brought the Panthers back to two points. That's not the case. They trail by eight now. Time marching on, 24 minutes gone. Carey and Christie had a great battle all day. At the bottom, working hard is uh, Scott Salisbury. Max said he's in there for the Panthers. Umpire Weston will bounce. 24 and a half minutes gone. We will have very little time on with no goals having been scored in this last quarter. Carey against Christie. Rodney Campbell works his way through, gets it up on the Naley off. Beautiful control. Here goes Naley. Goal! Oh, what magnificent football from Mark Naley. He's booted three. What a tremendous solo effort. And he's brought the Panthers back to two points. Oh, top action on seven's big league. 27 kicks Mark Naley, three goals, a second half like you'll never see anywhere in a whole match from most people. What a great little player he is, a true rover in the real spirit of roving. And then out of that pack, round them he went, a short side step. Then when he had to finish the play, he finished it. So South Adelaide within two points, they've come back from nowhere, they've just ground their way back. And can they go on with the job? We're into time on. Have they got enough time? 22 seconds of time on, two points of difference. Steckel gets it, Marshall goes for the thump. Daryl Hewitt gets a kick forward. Naley in the action again. Salisbury, desperation, throws himself at it. Will Brockhurst caught. Shane Butler's got it. On to David Kepler. Chance for the Panthers. Kepler will go long. Eddie against Garten. McFarlane gets across. Oh, almost took the mark. Salisbury had it and lost it. A soccer off the ground. Chance for the Panthers here. Oh, great work by Gibbs, however, and forces it out of play in the forward pocket. Just when a goal looks as certainly to South Adelaide. Two points in it, and a minute of time on have been played. Robert Odie. Oh, what a game. We see only just for three minutes. It'll be all right, David. South are putting everything into it. To come back. Glenelga just trying to hang on now. It looks as though the way they've played, they've been trying to hang on since quarter time. <laughs> Coach Corn, he'll be very upset. South Adelaide have had all the play. They changed their game since the rain came. They haven't fallen, fallen over. They've tended to keep their feet, get it onto each other, run on again. They certainly worked hard. Davies gets the ball inboard a little. Kicked on by Reed. He goes around the boundary line. Off the siren. Glenda, what was a very entertaining game in the most difficult of conditions. The Mel running out the victors by two points. 10 goals, 7 to South Adelaide, 9 goals, 11. 